we shall now go through some standard formulas in derivability that, that is the derivatives of some standard functions. Uh, derivatives of some standard functions. All of them, the very first one is everybody knows about it. Derivative of x square is 2x, derivative of x cube is 3x square, derivative of x power 5 is 5x power 4, derivative of x power 10 is 10x power 9, like that. Next one, derivative of x is 1 into x power 1 minus 0 that is 1. Derivative of x is 1, derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of 3x is 3 like that. Next one, d by dx of 1 by x. Uh, moreover, we could have forgotten one particular style of representing a derivative. If you simply put a dash over that, uh, it is nothing but the derivative of that, is not it? 1 by x whole dash. 1 by x square whole dash, 1 by x cube whole dash, like that. What are the derivatives? What are the derivatives? 1 by x, what is the derivative? Minus 1 by x square. 1 by x square, minus 2 by x cube. 1 by x cube, minus 3 by x power 4. You I think you are able to trace the style of getting it uh, and in general what is the derivative of 1 by x power n? What is the derivative of 1 by x power n? It is nothing but minus n by x to the power of n plus 1. Minus 1 by x to the power of n plus 1 is minus n by x to the power of n plus 1. Now let us have this as the formula. What is the derivative of 1 by x power n minus n by x power n plus 1? Come on, what is the derivative of 1 by x square minus 2 by x cube? The derivative of x power 4 minus 4 by x power 5, like that we can have. Well done. Next one. Derivative of root x what is the derivative of root x? What is the derivative of cube root of x? What is the derivative of fourth root of x? What is the derivative of nth root of x? If you are able to create a formula or create a result, it must be reused to any number of similar type of examples. For that purpose only, I like to ask you to tell me the derivative of nth root of x. What is nth root of x? Let us have a very simple piece of sample, a simplification at the side. What is nth root of x? Nothing but 1 by n into x power 1 by n minus 1. This is nothing but 1 by n into x power 1 by n by x power 1. It is nothing but nth root of x by nx, is not it? So, you keep this point in view. What is the derivative of nth root of x? What is the derivative of nth root of x? nth root of x by nx. By noting it, derivative of root x, root x by 2x, 2 root x, root x by 2 root x, 1 by uh, root x by 2x, 1 by 2 root x, cube root of x, cube root of x by 3x, fourth root of x, fourth root of x by 4x, fifth root of x, fifth root of x by 5x. 
But you see, so many of us uh, are very familiar with the answer that uh, derivative of root x is 1 by 2 root x. Is it correct? How and why? It's very simple. It is evident. Square root of x means square root of x by 2x. Root x by x is root x 2 into root x 2 right 1 by 2 root x is correct. Therefore, instead of remembering derivative of root x is 1 by 2 root x, you try to remember that derivative of nth root of x is uh, nth root of x by an x. Well done. Next one, fourth formula. What is the derivative of uh, 1 by nth root of x? Let us construct the same for the sake of ourselves. Yes, what is 1 by nth root of x? x power minus 1 by n. What is its derivative? Minus 1 by n into x power minus 1 by n minus 1. It is just nothing but minus 1 by n into x power 1 by n into x power 1. Isn't it? You can trace this as minus 1 by nx into nth root of x. So, what is the derivative of 1 by nth root of x? This is nothing but 1 by minus 1 by nx into nth root of x. What is the derivative of 1 by root x? Minus 1 by 2x root x. What is the derivative of 1 by cube root of x? Minus 1 by 3x into cube root of x. What is the derivative of 1 by 4th root of x? Minus 1 by 4x into 4th root of x. What is the derivative of 1 by 5th root of x? Minus 1 by 5x into 5th root of x. Like that you can proceed. This is the way in which you are supposed to remember the formula. Yes. The next one is derivative of a power x is a power x into log a to the base g. Derivative of 2 power x is 2 power x into log 2 to the base g. Derivative of 3 power x is log 3 power x, 3 power x into log 3 to the base g like that. And it is not impossible to get this formula as by the usual way limit as x. Uh, see, if you do you want to have the proof, it is very simple. Let me call this f of x. f dash x is therefore equal to limit as h tends to 0 a power x minus f of x minus f of a by limit as h tends to 0 a power x plus h minus a power x by h by h this is equal to limit as h tends to 0 a power x into a power h minus 1 by h. We all know that this is nothing but log into the base sheet and there is no h here to have the limit. Therefore, the coming answer is a power x into log e to the base sheet. It is purely believable as yes. it is credible. Not only that, we could have traced so many formulae in the previous discussion. For all those formulae, there is only one formula limit as x tends to, I mean, uh, derivative of x power n is n into x power n minus 1. Even that can be proved directly. Limit as h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x by h. Of course, so many of us call that formula as the fundamental or the first principle of differentiation, right? Using that so called first principle of differentiation, we will be able to have that uh, derivative of a power x is uh, a power x into log a to the base v. Derivative of 2 power x is 2 power x into log 2 to the base v. Derivative of 5 power x is 5 power x into log 5 to the base v. Well, derivative of e power x is e power x into log e to the base v. What is log e to the base v? 1. Therefore, Isn't it? Right. In this sequence, let me write this formula also 
d by dx of x power x is also there. That is d by dx of x power x. Let me write this formula. This can be proved, of course, by logarithmic differentiation. We shall later on discuss that in the next. That is the next session. We'll be going to deal with that. So for the present, let us believe that the derivative of x power x is uh, x power x into one plus log x. Derivative of x power x is x power x into one plus log x. Derivative of e power x is e power x. Derivative of two power x is two power x into log two. Like that. Well done. Next one. Now let us look at the derivatives of some trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions. We all know that d by dx of sin x is cos x. d by dx of cos x is minus sin x. Derivative of tan x is secant square x. Derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x cot x. Derivative of secant x is secant x into tan x. Derivative of tan x is secant square x. And the proofs of for for these formulae is beyond the scope of these sessions. Of course, they are very fundamental. They are elementary. Of course, every such proof can be viewed or are observed in the in the in the pattern of uh, first principles of a derivative. It's not impossible. Well, then next one derivative of uh, sine inverse x. Is equal to one by root minus one by root one minus x square. This can again be taken as minus cos inverse. Where all x belongs to minus one to one. Good. Derivative of tan inverse x is. One by one plus x square. The same can be minus for minus cot inverse x. Of course, it is for all x belongs to R because its domain is set of real numbers, set of real numbers. And derivative of secant inverse x, one by x root x square minus one. This can again be taken as d by dx of minus. Cosecant inverse x for all mod x greater than one. So to have the derivative like this, we should have mod x greater than one because there only secant inverse x can be defined, isn't it? Yes. Next one. Now there are some fundamental formulae regarding uh, algebra of derivatives. Derivative of f of x plus g of x is derivative of f of x plus derivative of g of x. Need not write in the notes, or it can be uh, kept in mind. So very simple, and we use it for many number of times. Similarly, derivative of f of x minus g of x is derivative of f of x minus derivative of g of x. Derivative of a into f of x is a into derivative of f of x, like that. And the case of f of x into g of x, or f of x by g of x. A separate discussion has been done. What is that? D by dx of u into v of x is derivative of first one plus derivative of second one. While forming the derivative of first one, second one will be followed just simply. And vice versa. What I mean to say is, this is v of x into d by dx of u of x plus u of x into d by d by dx of v of x. In very short form, u be whole dash. Whole dash means derivative of u. 
u dash into v v dash into u. Now you can extend this also u v w whole dash. What can you say? u dash into v w v dash u w w dash u. Can you extend this to three, four more functions? Say u v w t whole dash. We can of course, but not necessary because in our uh, uh, daily pattern of uh, uh, looking at the problems, we do not generally we do not come across such functions. If at all there are something like that, we clap two and two like that. Two functions as one group, two functions as one group, we apply UV, UV rule like that. This is what we call about product rule. Well then, just like that U by V whole dash. What is that? U by V whole dash. What is U by V whole dash? That is the derivative of U by V. U dash V V dash U by V square. This is a combination of uh, general uh, rules regarding algebra of derivatives regarding products and quotients. This is called a product rule. This is nothing but this. This is again extended product rule. This is a quotient rule by u by v remain the quotient of u and v, isn't it? Well, so it is called a quotient rule. This is a product rule. This is also a product rule. You see, there are some beautiful applications of this quotient rule. Yes, without applying this formula, you'll be able to have the answer directly for some particular models. What are they? Let us see. As we just discussed, there are beautiful applications of the formula u by v or our, our, our quotient rule. What is that quotient rule? Let us again recall that. Of course, in the short form only we could have written u dash v minus v dash u by v square. It is that. What is d by dx of ax plus b by cx plus d? u dash for ax a for b 0 v cx plus d. v dash for c x c for d 0 c plus 0 c u v square a into c x a into c x they can be cancelled leaving you a d minus b c It is just nothing but the determinant A D minus B C by denominator whole square. That is C X plus D whole square. What is D by D X of A X plus B by C X plus D? It is just nothing but A D minus B C by C X plus D whole square. Well done. 2x plus 3 by 5x plus 10, rather 9. What is its derivative? AD minus BC, 18 minus 15, 3 by 5x plus 3 whole square. Again, x by 2x plus 3 whole dash. Come on x means 1x, a d 3, b c 0 by 2x plus 3 whole square. Okay, right. 1 by 1 minus x, what is it? No, x by x minus 1, a d minus 1, minus 1 by x minus 1 whole square. 
Okay, right. Just like that is 4 by x plus 4. What is its derivative? Or x by x plus 4. What is its derivative? AD minus BC is 4 by x plus 4 whole square. Okay. So far, we have seen the application when and only when both numerator and denominator are of first degree. Now, let us observe this in another corner that is in, in a, through another angle. Let us see. If you have dy dx of a into f of x plus b by c into f of x plus d whole square. What can you see? You see, as usual, as in the previous case, a into d is a d minus b c by denominator whole square, that is cx whole square into, for f of x, its derivative is f dash x. And it will be very, very clear if you can look at some numerical applications to that. We shall now do that. d by dx of 2x square plus 5 by 5x square minus 3. What is it? ad minus bz minus 6 minus 25 is minus 31 by 5x square minus 3 whole square into in the place of f of x, we are having x square. Its derivative is 2x. Altogether, it is minus 62x by 1 more application. 3 into e power x plus 4 by 5 into e power x plus 2 dash. That is its derivative. Here in this problem, in the place of f of x, what are we having? e power x, let it be a d minus b z, that is 6 minus 20. 6 minus 20 is minus 14, minus 14 by 5 into e power x plus 2 whole square into, in the place of f of x, we are having e power x. Its derivative is e power x, so that uh, the total answer is Like that, we shall be making use of this formula. We shall be making use of this formula. Isn't it? Good. Next. Now, there are some special applications, application-oriented problems are there. Let us look at uh, such problems. f of x is equal to x minus x square plus x cube minus x power 4 plus x power 5 and so on, infinity with mod x less than 1, mod x less than 1. Then d by dx of f inverse of x. He is asking us. Therefore, to trace the answer for such questions, you may be attempting two applications. Number one, you must be able to know f inverse of x and then its derivative. First of all, you have to get f of x simplified. What is f of x? f of x is equal to a by 1 minus r, isn't it? a by 1 minus r. How? What is a by 1 minus r? What is a and what is r? It is very simple to look at f of x. It is just nothing but infinite series, infinite geometric series whose common ratio is always less than 1. You see, the common ratio is minus 6. Mod x is less than 1, isn't it? So, mod minus 6 is also less than 1 because mod x is nothing but mod minus 6. So, we will be able to use the formula a by 1 minus r. a is x by 1 minus r is 1 minus of 1 plus x. The t is x by 1 plus x. Well, my dear, 
at this juncture you must be knowing the style of getting f inverse of x directly what is that style look here if f of x is equal to ax plus b by cx plus d then f inverse of x is of course this formula is valid this structure rather this style is valid when and only when the expressions involved in that are uh, existing well f inverse of x is equal to minus of dx minus b by cx minus a x is not equal to minus c minus d by c and x is not equal to a by c of course okay you recall that formula according to that what is its inverse what is the inverse of x f inverse of x is equal to minus 1 by this is nothing but x plus 0 by x plus 1 isn't it you apply that formula minus of dx minus b that is x by x minus 1 that is equal to 1 by 1 minus x minus x by x minus 1 or simply 1 by 1 minus x this is f inverse of x this is f inverse of x now you have its derivative of course uh, you can have the derivative by using the formula or by the direct uh, um, uh, finding the derivative also 1 by 1 minus x derivative is minus 1 by 1 minus x whole square into minus 1 is just nothing but f inverse of x whole dash 1 by 1 minus x whole square 1 by 1 minus x whole square so this is the way in which we we, we make an attack on these problems of uh, such sort another form formula is there see if at all there is uh, there are only two functions we use uh, uv formula if there are two three functions we apply uv w formula here there are four functions what do you notice it's very simple f of x is equal to this is I could have multiplied and divided with x minus 2 what is x minus 2 into x plus 2 x square minus 4 x square minus 4 into x square plus 4 x power 4 minus 16 x power 4 minus 16 into x power 4 plus 16 x power 8 minus 256 x power 8 minus 256 into x power 8 plus 256 is nothing but x power 16 minus 2 power it is 256 into 256 2 power 8 into 2, 2 power 8, 2 power 16 by x minus 2 this is a pop x ah first of all what is what is the question here it's nothing but f dash dx c requires f dash dx c requires you apply the general u by v formula quotient rule come on u dash 16x power 5 v dash 1 by v square with the usual simplification you will be arriving at the answer it is not impossible of course the main and crucial thing here that you have to catch is multiply with x minus 2 and x plus 2 in both numerator and denominator that's all unless or otherwise it, it becomes a tedious fact to simplify them yes of course next one another beautiful question is before us you think of f of x is equal to integral bar of mod sin x plus mod cos x for all x belongs to r here you see four functions are there sine function cos function 
modulus function, greatest integer function. Mod sin x plus mod cos x. It always lies between 1 and root 2. Everybody knows it. It always lies between 1 and minimum value is 1 for mod sin x plus mod cos x and at most the maximum value is root 2. Therefore, as this lies between 1 and root 2, its integral part is always 1. That is, f of x is equal to 1 is a constant function irrespective of the nature of x. That you may have to catch here. That is the only thing in this function, in this problem, nothing else. There is nothing to do. The answer is obtained. What is the derivative of a constant function? It is 0. Why? Derivative means rate of change. Constant function means it never changes. Change is 0. So, relative change or, uh, or uh, the rate change is also 0. Hence, the derivative is 0. Hence, uh, what is f dash dx is always 0. Is always 0. So, such things uh, you, you, you may have to catch the concept there. So, that uh, much time will be saved for us to answer the questions. So, this is a constant function. You may have to recollect uh, and it is its derivative is surely 0. Like this, there are so many special functions which look special, yes, and in which there is there is some spark in it we may have to learn and notice. Then only we will be able to have the answer immediately. Yes. One more such example. How many functions are there you look at? Secret inverse function, sine function, a polynomial ax and root of x square minus 1. People may think of it in a different way. Secret inverse of they, they will be finding, you assuming this entire thing to be some x, secret inverse x, 1 by x into square root of x square minus 1 and so on, etc, etc. They will be finding a large step will be obtained at the, at the end. Yes? There is a sin with the problem. What is that? You see, the function, main function appearing at the beginning of the uh, gesture is nothing but secant inverse function. Its derivative secant inverse can be defined. Secant inverse x, what is the domain of secant inverse one function? Real numbers minus close integral minus 1 to 1, isn't it? or open interval minus 1 to 1, whatever it may be. You see, this is less than 1, sine something is less than 1, secant inverse of a quantity which is less than 1 is meaningless and we do not find the derivative for those functions which are meaningless. It is not a function at all. So, cannot be discussed with is the right option. Unless you notice that you may waste your valuable time by finding its derivative by taking this to be some x like that, like that, like that, proceed. Very bad of that. So, the thing that you have to observe is uh, the function is secant inverse function. Therefore, that number which lies inside that bracket must be less than 1. It should lie between minus 1 and 1. It should not lie between minus 1 and 1. But sign of something is such quantity which is to be prohibited. Therefore, such it is a meaningless one which cannot be spoken of, it can be discussed, cannot be discussed with at all. That is the right option. Like that, 
you may have to keep a special eye on the nature of the functions given in the problem. Yes, let me give you one more such function at your glance. Observe this lengthy of function f of x is equal to sin of x plus x square plus root of x cube plus x square plus 1. A lengthier polynomial, mixed a mixture of polynomials is given. But you see, the beautiful thing occurring in the definition of the function is integral part of all this into pi. That is the main function. He is asking about f dash x. Huh? You need not find this is, is this is supposed to be some x and sin x, the derivative of sin x is. No, not like that. You do not forget that this is the integral part function or the greatest integrate function. Whatever might be the nature, this is always an integer, right? Why? Because by the basic definition, by the basic structure itself, it is an integer because it is an integral part. You see, it is an integer, say some n. So, it is sin n pi. What is sin n pi? 0. So, the function f of x itself becoming 0, isn't it? f of x is n pi. What is f of x is sin n pi, I am sorry, sin n pi. What is sin n pi? It is 0. f of x it's itself is becoming 0. What do you say about f dash x? 0. Why? Because f is a constant function which yields 0 at every real number x. Its derivative is also 0. So, f dash x is 0. My dear friends, the function looks very brisk and burdensome. But there is some loophole in the definition. You catch hold of that so that you can have the answer directly. So, the derivative of this function is 0. Likewise, there are so many functions, so many problems we may be looking at.